Which of the three major advertising mediums is best for your business? It depends on the product you're selling. A very visual product would be best on TV or in print where a customer can look at it. A car dealership might benefit from being on radio where a prospect would be hearing about the virtues of a great new car while stuck in traffic in his old clunker. Think about what your customer will be doing when they're exposed to your ad. Is it likely to help or hurt your message? Do you offer a toll-free number for customers to call? Maybe radio's not good for that. How is a driver going to write it down without taking their hands off the steering wheel? After you've thought it out, you need to test your advertisement. Some businesses will make up two different direct mail pieces and send them out to two different areas. You may find that one brings a much greater response than the other. The only way to determine the best possible advertising method is to experiment, test, and adjust. Once you've decided where to advertise, it's time to create your message. Even if you can't afford an advertising agency, you may be able to find successful graphics designers, copywriters, and video producers to help you put together your ads. This is another area where you should seek out the assistance of an experienced professional. Some newspapers will provide typesetting, layout, and even assistance in writing advertising copy. Make sure that you have the final decision on what the completed ad looks like. Many ads have been printed with bad phone numbers, off-color logos, and grammatical mistakes because of typesetter errors. Even if your salesman offers to proofread it for you, it's in your best interest to check your ads yourself. Many radio stations will help you produce your advertisements, and that's good for the technical part of the job. But before you let them write your advertising copy, make sure they have the expertise on staff to do it well. Just because they're a radio station doesn't mean they can write radio advertisements. If their voiceover personalities don't sound right for what you're selling, then don't use them, even if it's free. For example, if you own a hair care salon, you may not want a loud, high-energy sports announcer to do your voiceovers. Cable television companies will also help you get your spots produced. Once again, an advertising sales executive is not the same as a professional writer. Don't assume that because they work for a cable company, they're experts in all areas of television. Some cable companies will produce your commercials for free if you buy a certain number of spots. While that may be a cheap alternative to paying several thousand dollars for video production, make sure you question the cable company as to the experience of their production crews. Some cable companies have experienced staffs with hundreds of thousands of dollars of modern production equipment. And some have students working for free to get experience. The end result will be noticeable when your commercial is aired and an amateurish commercial will not make your business look good. If you're going to do it yourself, how do you prepare an advertisement? The best approach is not to write what you want to say. Write what your customer needs to hear in order to take action. Are you selling a product that is very sensitive to price? Then your advertisement needs to talk about value and price. For example, most people buy office products based on cost. Few people care about the quality of a pencil or a pen or photocopier paper. So if you're preparing an advertisement to sell office products, it wouldn't be a great idea to advertise that you have the best quality paper clips in town. You might think that your paper clips are the greatest paper clips ever made, but the truth of the matter is, it's a paper clip. Nobody cares about the quality of a piece of twisted wire, but they might care that you have the best prices for paper clips. What if you own a burglar alarm company? Do you want to brag about how cheap you are? In that instance, your advertisement might be geared to providing security and safety to your customers and their loved ones. How do you get those ideas across? Talk about how experienced your alarm installers are. 
how the equipment you use is top rated. So when you prepare your advertisements, always try to look at them from your customer's point of view. Show the ads to your family, friends, and business associates. Ask them what they think. You might get some useful suggestions, or you might find that people perceive the ads completely different than you expected. Thousands of books have been written about advertising. There's no lack of places to get information, ideas, and insights. Even if you're not big enough to be able to afford an advertising agency, there are still plenty of opportunities for your business to use advertising to grow. There are many advertising avenues available to today's entrepreneurs. Unfortunately, there are also many businesses using those avenues, so it's hard to have your message stand out among the chatter. The final section of this program will give you a few ideas for advertising your company. The cost of an internet website is only a few dollars a month. Just about everybody in the world has their own website these days. There are several inexpensive tools for creating websites and many useful, easy to learn books and guides to help you set up your site. Even if you have no design experience, you can put together a simple text-based website that will give a prospective customer some information about your company and tell them how to contact you. Most websites offer a way for a customer to send you email directly from your site. Think about it. That's the electronic equivalent of someone coming to your front door. However you design your website, make sure you submit it to the search engines. Search engines are what bring traffic to your website. They are internet catalogs and you need to be listed with every search engine you can because that's where your customers will find your name. If you can invest some money in having a professional design a website for you, that's even better. Professional web designers can create interactive forms for your customers to fill out, private or public message boards, and even secure online order forms for direct purchase of merchandise. The brochure has been around since the printing press. It's an excellent way to tell someone about your company. The most commonly used brochure is the three-panel trifold, which is nothing more than an 8.5 by 11-inch sheet of paper folded into thirds. The three-panel fits perfectly into a business envelope. You can have the brochures created by a graphic designer and printed by your local printer or you can purchase pre-printed full-color brochure papers at most business supply stores and make them yourself. The full-color papers are great because you can run them through a laser printer or photocopier and it still looks like you have a full-color brochure. There are many desktop publishing programs available for your home computer that make it easy to create a brochure. Starting your own business can be a tough journey to complete. While everyone who tries to start a business is not successful the first time, perseverance, making mistakes, learning from your mistakes, and then fixing them are stepping stones on the path to success. Education and research are two invaluable tools for the entrepreneur. Seek out professional advice wherever you can. Don't cut corners when it's time to set up your business. Use legal advisors, accounting advisors, and advertising advisors whenever possible. We hope you've enjoyed viewing this program and that you've gotten some useful information from it. We leave you with one final tip. This if you follow it, you are very successful in your business.
Wake up every morning at least one hour earlier than you do now. For that one hour a day, read a business book. It can be a book about sales, advertising, marketing, taxes, the economy, or any other business topic, but it must be about business. Magazines and newspapers don't count. This is about business education, not current events. You will find that in a few days, your mind has been opened up to so many new ideas and thoughts that you will be unable to contain yourself. Because when you open your mind to new ideas, you give yourself directions to take action. And when you take action, you have already done something that 90% of the people in the world don't do. And that's why you will be one of the 10% who succeed at starting your own business.